Have you guys ever been searching for a screw to like to a specific piece of furniture or something and you know you saw it recently but like you, you can't remember where for the life of you and you've looked everywhere for it and you can't find it? I just found the screw in my earring box. It just happened for me. Welcome back to my channel. If you watched last week's video, you know I talked all about self tapes and if you missed it i will make sure and link it down below for you in the description box today i'm going to continue on the topic of self tapes but this video is really a how-to on making an actual self tape audition video how to make a self tape that's what i meant let's get started first of all i just want to say that this is how i do my self tapes this is by no means the gold standard there are self tapes out there that look way better than mine and there are some that don't look as good and that's okay there are all kinds of self tapes if they've been requested then they're gonna get watched no matter what and the best self tape doesn't mean getting the job um, but it is really important to do a really good self tape so that you look professional and it's enjoyable to watch to make a good self tape you need these things you need a clear camera good sound good lighting a clear backdrop, a reader, and basic editing software. You do need to have those things for your self tape to look and sound really good and professional. There are always exceptions. There are times that maybe you're on location shooting something in a hotel room and you don't have all your stuff. I've had classmates that have been in that situation and they prop up their cell phone on some books in their hotel room. One person had the, um, the bellhop come and read the lines with her and she edited it on her cell phone and sent it in that way and that was the best she could do but she did it that's what matters if you have to get it done you have to get it done but if you can make it the very best you can i was talking to another actor friend of mine and she was saying how a friend of hers just does like whatever self tapes like she turns on the the camera on her um, desktop apple computer she puts it on record and she just talks right into that little hole at the top of the computer and does her self tape that way. Um, I'm not sure how she does the other lines, but she doesn't put a lot of effort into it. Whereas my friend that I was talking to has amazing lights, an amazing camera, fantastic mic, and edits them all nice and everything. And her and she doesn't get called in off a lot of them and her friend gets called in like all the time off her self tapes. Bottom line is if you're right for the role, you're right for the role and there are varying degrees of quality of self tapes but you really must have these basic things where the camera looks really good it's well lit so they can see you it sounds good so they can hear you your reader's not too loud etc etc so what i'm going to do now is insert a little video here of my actual setup now i'm going to be taking it with my cell phone because i want my camera that i use to be in the shot so you can see how it looks on the tripod and everything so first i have my backdrop it's a nice clean cotton sheet backdrop. Um, you can order them online. The place I order most of my stuff from is called cowboystudio.com. Um, they're also on Amazon. I'll link all that down below for you. Uh, and it's really well priced, good quality stuff. I chose the blue background because it's a universally flattering color. And sometimes I have friends or other people come over and do their self tapes. And blue just kind of looks good for everybody and makes the audition really pop. You can see that my backdrop sheet is being held up on a backdrop frame. This is also something you can get on Cowboy Studio and many other places, really any camera store as well. It's an adjustable stand where you can put the sheet over it. Alternatively, if you don't wanna buy all this, you can just get a sheet from Joanne Fabrics or wherever and you can nail it to your wall. Or some people paint their whole wall the color that they wanna have for their self tapes. If they're doing it all the time, then might as well paint the wall. It's definitely easier that way and it looks even smoother, so that's one option too. And then I have my lights. I have two softbox lights on stands and these also are from Cowboy Studio. I will link those for you as well. I try to put myself in front of natural lighting in front of a window plus the lights whenever I can, but a lot of times I film myself tapes at night, so it's just the lights and then the overhead room light that's working for me, and that's fine too. As long as your light settings on your camera are adjusted well, it can work either way. But outdoor light is especially flattering as long as you don't have the light shining directly on you and there's no shadows on your face. And then the star of the show, my camera, I use a Canon Rebel T6i. You can use your cell phone. That's what I used up until I got my camera and the, it looked fine. It was totally acceptable. I just wanted to get a better camera that I use for my YouTube videos and now I use it for my self-taped auditions. 
and the lens on a camera is a Canon Zoom Lens EFS 18 55 millimeter. Um, I'll link the, all that down below for you too. The camera is on an adjustable tripod. I bought the cheapest one I could find at Sammy's Camera on Fairfax in LA and I think it was somewhere around $25 or so. Um, you can also find them on Craigslist. I recently got a better quality tripod off Amazon because I tape, sometimes I tape my husband or friends who are like, you know, a lot taller than <laughs> little old me and they need something that goes up a lot higher. So I do have two tripods now, but this is the one that I use for me. And my microphone is hooked up directly to my camera. This is the Rode Video Mic Go On Camera Shotgun mic, and I got it at Best Buy. It's a hundred bucks. It's really great. I like to use this when I'm doing self tapes because it just works the best when you have a reader behind the camera and then I'm in front of the camera. It just picks up the sound the most evenly, but you can also use a lav mic, which is the kind that clips onto your shirt, which is the kind that I'm using right now for my video. And I always use it because it's just for me. So it doesn't need to pick up someone that's across the room. Um, but for a reader, you can either just use the camera that's on your cell phone or on your camera, or you can use a shotgun mic like this one. So that's what the room looks like when I have it set up for my self tapes. And then when I edit it, I just take out my memory stick from the camera, stick it into my computer. I use a Mac desktop computer and, um, and then I use iMovie to edit. That's really all you need. I use iMovie to edit my YouTube videos as well. It's all you need. I mean, sure, if you're doing any more like fancy effects or anything, you wanna go with a uh, more expensive, you know, software that you can buy for editing, but it's just, for me, it's just not necessary. I can put in title cards and all that with iMovie. It works great and it's free. Now, like I said, there are alternatives to all of this. You don't have to have lights. You can just get in front of a window. Um, you do need to have some light. It does need to be well lit. They do have to be able to see your face. And if you don't have a microphone, it's fine. Just use the mic that's part of your camera or part of your cell phone. Cell phones work great. Always make sure you hold them horizontally when you're filming. Make sure that you're not holding it like this. Make sure you're holding it like this. Another thing I want to explain that's kind of difficult to explain sitting here, but I'll do my best. If I am auditioning and the camera is right in front of me and the reader is right here, you want to get your reader like as close to the camera as possible. Like I'm looking like right now I'm looking about one inch away from the camera lens. Okay, you don't ever want to look into the camera lens for your audition, but I'm looking about one inch or two inches away from it right now. If your reader is standing over here, which it seems like a natural place for them to stand, but on camera it looks like you're looking at something like way far out. So try to get your reader as close to the camera as possible and not too high up and not below it. Just, you know what I'm saying. Now, of course, you don't have to do any of this at home. You don't have to buy any of this stuff. If you don't have the space for it, it is a-okay. There are a plethora of places all around Los Angeles, and I'm sure in other cities too, that you can go and have your self tape done. They have a reader for you, they've got the lights, they've got the whole setup, they edit it for you and send it to you on a file, and then you can either edit it further or you just send it in that way. There's lots of places. I will link uh, all the best ones that I know of down below. I love Argentum's backdrop. I think it's so beautiful. It's like a gray backdrop. I think I'm actually gonna buy one of those for myself because it looks even prettier than the blue does. But yes, lots of places, lots of alternatives if you don't mind driving there and having limited time because you pay, you know, usually by the like 15 minutes or half hour blocks and it does get pricey. You can check out all their prices online, but usually for a half hour, I think it can be somewhere around like 60 bucks to do a self tape at a place. And if you're doing a lot of them, which everybody is right now, then that really adds up. So either try to have your own place or have a friend with a setup. And if you're going to one of these self tape studios to film your audition, make sure you're off book, like so solid and good, or you are okay with reading right off your page because you are not gonna have the time. They're only gonna give you the time that you booked. And so you are not, they do book up fast. So you are not gonna have the time to do 40 takes if you can't get your lines right. And some of them even have coaches there too. I don't know how much you trust these coaches. That's totally up to you. A lot of acting studios have self-tape services in them as well. I can link a couple of those for you so that you know you're getting coaching from an actual acting coach. Oh, really quick. Uh, like I said in my last video, usually when you get the audition, there will be specific instructions on how to send it unless it came from your agent, in which case you just send the tape to your agent. 
You can send that through any kind of file sharing service that you want. Those are usually very secure. Some places say do not send through this or that system, whatever. What works best for me that I usually do unless they request it through a different method is I send to my reps the audition on a Vimeo link. I go to vimeo.com and upload it there and I make sure it is password protected. It must be password protected. Casting directors really get upset if your audition is floating around out there and anybody can see it because it gives away storylines to shows and movies. Oh, and real quick, if you're looking for an in-depth tutorial on how to edit on iMovie, they're all over YouTube. That's how I learned how to edit. I just went on YouTube and watched tutorials and it was super, super easy. It's very user-friendly. Okay, you guys, I really hope that was helpful to you. Self-tapes are definitely here to stay. So it's really important that you make sure you know how to do them well. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't hesitate to hit that cute little subscribe button that you see. It's so cute. I mean, just click it. Why not? <laughs>